Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm looking at Infinite Dice's pack, which gives us aircraft carriers. Now, of course, there have been quite a few uh, aircraft carriers have been covered for a while, uh, and many people that are vastly funnier have made videos about it. But the developer did actually, you know, mail me personally and say, please, please, please cover my module. So yes, Infinite Dice, uh, you have created the aircraft carrier module, which actually includes a bunch of different parts. Okay, you have this giant conning tower or whatever that you, uh, or the giant control tower that you have for your aircraft carrier. You have a, you have models that are pre-built and if you look down it is the Narwhal, KCVN, Narwhal. I don't know what KCVN stands for, um, Kerbal something or other Navy. I don't know. Um, this is clearly too big for <laughs> for the very small size available in the in the vehicle assembly, not in the vehicle assembly building, but in the space plane hangar, right? They actually advise you to use Dead Beef's mod, uh, is it Dead Beef's, you know, building uh, mod or whatever that basically lets you you know escape the vehicle assembly building and it lets you add some other symmetry commands but I managed to forget to use that I, I actually switched this around between a couple of installs because I needed a version with and without Ferrum aerospace and apparently I don't have it here so yeah you've, you've got all these parts under structural menu you have hulls and you know the the bow and the stern you have some struts you also have these tube struts um, I think using these, it looks like you can make tubes joining places, which be kind of cool because you can make like a 3D maze and lose your kerbals in it or something. They have a nuclear power plant, should you wish to use it. I do not wish to use it here because one's already built in. Um, you have a loading ramp and all these other parts that come along with it. and. Yeah, there's also rudders which are under aerodynamic surfaces. Uh, we could, of course, generalize that term to be uh, hydrodynamic surfaces since air is technically a fluid. It's just not water. It's slightly less dense. So there we go. Look at this magnificent creation sitting on the water. It, it actually sits more or less right in front of the runway. So should you feel cocky, you can actually try to land on this thing. Now, it comes with uh, an arrestor wire system that will slow you down. It comes with a command tower here. You can see 300 meters depth. That's uh, quite fast. I never realized it got that deep that quickly. We have elevators which actually work. You can get, uh, you can put things on them and have them, you know, taxi around. Uh, in theory, I've not tried that. There are these uh, docking adapters. If you're going to drive it around, you really need to put your things on docking adapters, otherwise they slide all over the place. And at the back, yeah, you have a nice little uh, loading ramp. Let's uh, put that out there so you can see inside it. Look at that. Excellent. Let's uh, toggle this thing back and we'll go to the space center and try taking a plane down there, right? So they give you two aircraft that go with it. One is the Wasp and one is the Shark. The The Wasp is a lot faster. The Shark is a lot more floatier. Uh, I tried flying the Wasp using Ferrum Aerospace and it just would always flip out and die repeatedly. So one of the things that they inc is included in this pack... Okay, so you have the docking adapter underneath, but you also have the landing system which you can deploy with five and that brings out an arrestor hook and also deploys air brakes to slow you down but we are not landing right now we are taking off oh yeah it also has a reverse thrust system in here which will let you fly backwards if you turn it on let's try that for a second uh look it's gonna make me want to go backwards and i'm not gonna do that because that would be really dangerous so i'm gonna turn it off and go forwards, full power, and see if I can actually get this thing out to the carrier and land it. And if not, I do have some I prepared earlier, but this is being recorded live at this time, and you never know just how good it's going to be. Oh, yeah. This thing would just always flip out and die when I was flying it under Ferrum Aerospace. Regardless of how I adjusted the control surfaces or anything, I was simply doomed. Right, okay, so. I'm going to slow myself down a whole lot. Oh, and then I'm going to put it back in and deploy those. This is 
this is kind of hard actually. 1.9 kilometers. I'm gonna adjust my viewpoint, get it directly ahead. So I have to hit it before the arrestor wire, otherwise I will probably run off the end of the carrier. That's the idea, is that you basically have this hook that comes down and will grab that wire. Oh dear 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 No 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 Okay let's put it inside huh? Okay. Well so much for that. Hey look he's okay. We can EVA Oh wow that's kinda crazy. Hey jump on jump on inside and take a look at this awesome carrier. Okay time accelerate. Oh okay that's not quite the way I want it. Can he walk in there at all? Okay, that is not so good. Maybe if I slow time down. Ah, there we go. Yay, now I can speed time up again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every single surface makes him want to walk. Also, because my mouse is pointing at things, we have green flashy lights everywhere. Let's take a look. Look, you can take a look out the back of... Look at the size of him. You can barely see over the edge. He's quite impressed by the size of this magnificent vessel of the Kerbal Navy and uh, how robust it was. It survived even the impact of an aircraft. Of course, it is an aircraft carrier and it has its own power. It can move around. It will carry aircraft assuming they're bolted down. Otherwise, the aircraft and other material not bolted down will just kind of slide towards the back. And if it doesn't get stuck, it will get deposited in the water, just like that poor astronaut who's uh, rapidly facing, fading into the distance. And I, when I say rapidly, I mean rapidly. This thing is going at over 40 meters per second, which is something like 150, me uh, mile, 150 kilometers per hour or 90 miles per hour is the top speed of this thing. Uh, if you had an air aircraft carrier that went that fast, it would be a major strategic asset, no doubt. Regardless, it, it's nice to have something that goes that fast because you don't want to have to steam all the way around the world at, you know, realistic speeds to pick up the astronauts that are returning from the moon mission. Because, yeah, you can uh, simulate that whole thing, pretend that you are the USS Hornet, which is, of course, famous for recovering the Apollo 11 and the Apollo 12 astronauts. And uh, now, it was decommissioned in, like, 1970. Now it is actually a floating museum where they have a whole bunch of exhibits and all that. It's an Alameda, you know, uh, you know, according to Star Trek IV, where the nuclear vessels used to be. Yeah, um, actually, it was really close to the place where I made my video about the helium balloons. It was, like, literally, you know, spitting distance from there if you were an Olympic-class spitter, but it was pretty close. Uh, <laughs> the USS Hornet's on display, and you can go in there as, a, you know, it's like a museum. It's also supposedly one of the most haunted places in the world. Uh, not that I believe any of that stuff, but, uh, you know, interesting trivia nonetheless. And, well, yes, I presume that its control panels are a little more realistic than these. That I, I can't even tell if those polygons are straight. I, I think it's, it's kind of amusing to see the way that the, because the textures aren't flat on, they kind of mess with your head a little. He seems very impressed by his his um, instrument panels <laughs> but yeah look we're heading pretty fast towards the shore here I think I'm gonna see what happens when you ground an aircraft carrier because why not I, I guess the other thing I could do is stick it on top of an Orion rocket and take it into space right and we could have some you know spaceships and stuff on unfortunately I haven't got the mods to to build that thing in the in the vehicle assembly building here we go, look, there's our... We're coming back! Hey, come and get us! No, never mind. I also like the way it looks like the the things around their necks to contain the helmet. It looks like they're chained in place with those. Obviously, the Kerbal Navy is a slave... has a you know, conscription going on, right? There we go. Come on! For full ramming speed ahead, we'll show that continent who's boss. What, what's gonna happen? Oh, and I can hear the washing machine kicking in upstairs. Oh dear! Oh, there goes the bow! Oh great! Yeah! Whoa! <laughs> that is not what I expected to have happen. 
Wow, I like the way it's like half in, half out the water. Beached forevermore. But yeah, oh, they, I guess they can still access the rear if they need to get in and out. I wonder if the plane's still there. It'd be nice to know. Ah, never mind. Well, anyway, let's move on. So yeah, let's uh, try that again. Okay, standard procedure, press 2 to start up the main engine, and we have 4 and 5, bind the reverse jets and the, the landing system. Get myself up to speed, nice and agile. Um, as I said, you do this with Ferrum, and it will just flip out backwards regardless of what you do. <laughs> it does not want to fly. Okay, line this thing up, and you see actually there has been a few tries prior to this. Uh, there is a loading lag here. Okay, come on. Try to keep myself lined up. The important thing is you've got to hit it just before that arrestor wire, but you've got to come down not so low that you crash into the back of the aircraft car. Oh, I'm too high, too high, too high. Down, low, 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 low. Okay, oh, good, good, good. Yes! Excellent! Ooh, some explosions. But I'm down! I am down. I have landed this thing in a postage stamp in the middle of any ocean. There is nothing but sea on either side. Hey, I guess I damaged the deck with the exhaust, but everything looks fine. Otherwise, it doesn't look like there's anything missing from the aircraft other than... Oh, wait. Yeah, other than the, um, the tailplane. Where did that go? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was there was a tailplane on here when I, I flew out. But how do you lose a tailplane and not like the rest of the aircraft? I, I don't quite get that. Surely that's the part that is most distant from <laughs> from the rest of things. So yeah, look, let's uh let's go try using the elevator. Come on, go faster. Faster, faster, faster. This is Bill, he's gonna take a look. Yeah, world's slowest elevator. I, I wonder how fast elevators on these uh, carriers actually are. Okay, that's like seven meters, six, five. Wow, this is positively glacial. And there we are, we're now on the, we're on the deck, on the lower deck. See, you can get between the decks using the vehicle lifts actually maneuvering a vehicle onto them, that's a separate problem. So yeah, with the idea of using the elevators with vehicles in mind, I thought I'd build this amphibious uh, v rover, basically. I took rover wheels and stuck them onto the run runabout that comes as part of this pack, which is a little four-seater boat. So I'll drive it in the back and... Oh my god, what is going on here? What? This thing, the wheels are just like spinning like nobody's business. <laughs> it's it's using like gyroscopic precession to lift the nose up. Where is it going? I'm like yawing there. Wait, 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 come back. There's nobody in it. It's like it's possessed by a poltergeist or something. Come back. What? Hey, wait, it just It's a ghost boat. It went through the walls. Come back. Oh, there. Yes. Well, okay. And I guess we lost mechanical jab, so we can't actually control this thing. And the, the, the wheels are still spinning like crazy spinny things. Come on. Well, so much for that cunning plan. So yeah, since I can't actually get a, a rover into the back of the, the hangar deck, well, or at least that plan failed in spectacular fashion, I thought, why not try something equally spectacular and try landing an aircraft in the hangar deck? So yeah, slowing this down as slow as it will go, and not bad. Again, I lost a tailplane. That's a two for two, losing tailplanes, landing on this thing. Hey, look, he's totally in the deck there. He could probably take off again and fly terribly because he doesn't have a tailplane. Not that the tail had any uh, controls on it or anything, but I'm sure it kind of helped it go straight. So yeah, what I really got a lot of requests for was, could I fly my version of Credible Sport and land it on an aircraft carrier? Because obviously that was something that the C-130 Hercules, and let me get that name right, was adapted for but never really used. Um, 
So yeah, here it is, it's the same model as I've had previously. Uh, we've switched everything over to using Ferrum Aerospace, just uh, so that I've installed this under a different uh, game install. Take off instantly, I throttle back to like basically just above zero because we need to make sure we're moving as slow as possible. Now if you remember, uh, it has large solid rocket boosters which we can jettison to slow us down and then we have uh, little sepatrons to cushion our landing and you know further sets of sepatrons for takeoff and whatever and a lot of people ask why I don't use sepatrons for the actual braking and the reason is uh, that I need to be able to brake quickly and I need to be able to stop braking when I need when I ask it to and there we go we stop start the braking and fire those sepatrons and wait where's the desk going no no wait no get out of here thrust thrust throttle up throttle up throttle up oh crap um roll no no i get no control i get no control yes not only did i fly over this ship's deck and disintegrate it with my sepatron powered death rays but I managed to do a loop to loop and you know crash back into it so yeah a different plan is needed and that plan is going to involve replicating the process by which Credible Sport uh, destroyed itself. That is, firing the braking thrusters without firing the vertical uh, descent thrusters. Now a lot of people have seen the Discovery Channel segment on uh, Credible Sport and they're, they, they get confused. Uh, the Discovery Channel thing doesn't really mention the vertical thrusters not firing, but that was probably far more important than the braking thrusters firing. Regardless, we're going to do this. We're firing those uh, braking boosters or whatever, bringing ourselves onto the deck. We've got to hold on to them until our speed reaches zero and then ditch them right away. And it's great how I ditch them into the deck and yet somehow the ship survives, whereas the flame from those tiny sepatrons is not enough is enough to uh, disintegrate the deck. Um, not quite sure where that comes from. So anyway, yeah, brakes on, throttle up the engines. Once we reach maximum thrust, we let off the engines and we're gonna turn off the brakes. There we go. We're gonna use the launch engines. There, and when we drop off the end, we fire the nose lift engines. Hey, look at that. An excellent takeoff there. And with that wonderful takeoff, my job here is done. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.